Welcome to Ballet Met's Director's Point of View. I'm your host, Brett Johnson. The company premiere of Edward Liang's Romeo and Juliet will tell Shakespeare's timeless tale of star-crossed lovers with all the beauty and intensity of classical ballet. Liang's inventive choreography infuses sword fights, a grand ball, and the iconic balcony scene with passion and elegance. Funny, tender, tragic, and deep, Romeo and Juliet will romance audiences for just one weekend only, featuring live music from the Columbus Symphony Orchestra. Let's find out more from Edward Liang during this episode of Ballet Met's Director's Point of View. The Columbus premiere of Romeo and Juliet is the final performance of the 2016-17 season for Ballet Met. The last performance of the season's always a little bittersweet, isn't it? I just can't believe we're uh, on the last program. This year has flown by, and um, this is something that I've been waiting for for many years. Uh, I've been waiting to present Romeo and Juliet here in Columbus, Ohio, um, since I took over the artistic directorship. And um, what is just what I think is everything to me is this is why I really started dance. The music of the score is genius. It brings life and soul and the lifeblood of dance, I think, to... Um, the general public and the community. And what's really exciting is that it's taken me and a whole group of people to bring live music to Romeo and Juliet. And we haven't had live music for a very, very long time outside of the 16 to 17 shows of Nutcracker. Um, We've partnered with Pro Musica. We partnered with JAG. We partnered with... Um, small collaborations with the symphony, but we haven't brought back where it is a real live music performance of a full-length ballet. And I'm super excited about this because this is the one that I've been waiting for to bring live music to. Romeo and Julia is, I think, the epitome of what full-length ballets can bring to the table. And what's different about this production is that this is the first full-length that what I consider old-school, full, lavish um, ballet. Uh, The sets and costumes are operatic, meaning they're big and bold and colorful and uh, these types of productions are more or less reserved for big ballet companies and ballet companies that are in the coast Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm very excited about that to be able to really open the eyes of Columbus, Ohio to see a really lavish production of Romeo and Juliet Mm -hmm. on top of that You know, I always like to put a little bit of spin on things, um, and they make a huge difference to me. Um, What that is, is like, let's take, for instance, the last death scene for Romeo and Juliet. Um, For most productions, uh, Romeo drinks the potion. He stumbles back. They're in the crypt scene. Juliet's on the crypt. He dies. She wakes up. And she has her last moment. She kills herself. And it's the end of the ballet. But we wanted to do a little different spin on it. So he takes the potion. He stumbles back to the crypt. He grabs her hand. Her hand starts twitching because she wakes up from her potion. She wakes up and she sees herself in the crypt. She turns around and she's so happy to see him because their plan has worked. She rushes towards him. And she grabs a bottle that's in his hand and she goes, what's this? And he doesn't have time to say goodbye. He just gives her one last kiss and he falls away. So just having that little twist gives it that extra pang of pain that I think we all love and need. (laughs) We're almost looking at, he's changed the story. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so, and um, where I thought that a lot of productions, because the piece of music for her potion solo in the the bedroom scene is the piece of music is eight minutes long. Mm. And so you can only kind of think about whether you take the potion for a certain amount of time before you make the audience really bored. <laughs> so I decided to put a little spin on it where um, this piece of music, this part of the music is the sim- is very similar to what is the thread for Romeo coming into a room. So the music comes in and she feels she feels there's a presence in the, her bedroom when she turns around it's the ghost of Tybalt and Mercutio and what i wanted to highlight was um the angel and the devil on her shoulder take the potion don't take the potion mm-hmm. take the potion don't take the potion so there's little bits that are different but just like most of my full lengths that i've created here in columbus um, even though I created this in 2000, I think 10, 12, I can't, no, I can't. Yes. 2012, um, for Tulsa ballet. Um, I really wanted to make a classic Romeo and Juliet. Um, I wasn't trying to, you know, make, change the story or make a, a contemporary version. This is ballet at its best. And when I really want this community and people listening that when they come to see Romeo and Juliet at the Ohio theater, they're going to be whisked away to any opera house around the world. That is what I want is, and what Ballet Met wants is to really show that we have world-class productions here in Columbus, Ohio. And that the quality that they're going to see in the sets and costumes and the dancing, you can find only in the huge opera house. And um, I'm very, very excited to take the next step in full lengths and showing the community what a lavish production looks like. And obviously in Columbus, we have the benefit of of the Ohio as well. Uh, Most cities aren't as lucky as we are to have such a a, a performing space. And that's that's limiting the term to perform something like this in. I mean, I think that all our guests, stagers that have staged all around the world and they come to Columbus, Ohio, and we're performing at the Ohio Theater, they're just astonished that this type of theater is in Columbus, Ohio. I mean, we're very, very lucky. And the dancers love dancing in the Ohio theater because it is so, it's so reminiscent of old opera houses. And it has a certain air and um, perfume and a certain energy to it. I remember performing at the Garnier in Paris and you're just floored that you're getting to dance on a stage where, I mean, it's so many historic performances. Um, It changes the dynamic. It changes the experience for the dancers and the audience. Um, So this is, this is, I would, I've been just, so excited to be able to open this ballet. I can't wait for this to come. At the same time, I can't believe that this is the last program. Exactly. And and a short one, too, just just over the weekend. So uh, make sure you get your ticket in and get going. Yeah, I... We're we're really lucky as well that um, Peter Stafford Wilson, uh, our conductor for Romeo and Juliet, he has conducted with us for many, many years. And then also... He does our um, Nutcracker tours to Detroit, and he's a brilliant conductor. And I'm, I'm very happy. We're, I'm very happy to have live music. I'm just so ecstatic. Um, I I would like to kind of talk about 
one thing about live music is that it, the reason why it makes such a huge difference for my dancers um, and the audience is that if you think about it, we rehearse to CD and it's one tempo, it's one way, it's one feeling. But if you change that dynamic and you change that and you bring back in spontaneity, you force the artist to really listen and to live in the moment because you never know what the conductor is going to give you. And with live music, you hear more and it's, it's real vibrations that are flowing through the real energy flowing through the theater. So it makes a huge difference. And I really invite the audience to come and see the difference and hear the difference of what that means. Yeah, if anyone's been to the Nutcracker performance, I think that's a good example of it. Uh, this year, uh, my daughter was lucky enough to sing with one of the high school choirs uh, for two of the performances. And I'd forgotten just the sound coming out of the pit of that. And, it, and it's so different than hearing it just through speakers. It's, it, it's very different. And it's also um, different because uh, there's no way that you can blend the same acoustic sound than you do even when it's completely remastered. You know, they beef up the strings in this section and there's reverberation in this section. Um, it's just night and day. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for being a part of uh, our podcast series this season. I've truly enjoyed talking with you. I can't wait to talk about next year. We were just talking about a little bit before recording this podcast. I'm not going to give it away other than if you're following Ballet Med, you know, it's the 40th anniversary next year. So, uh, stay tuned. You're already hearing rumblings about it, but I know it's going to be an exciting season next year too. I cannot wait to talk about it. We've been getting ready. I mean, it's 40 years. We have been a part of this community and we have not only just survived, we thrived. There's so many companies in the Midwest that have closed. And thanks to this community and all our ballet met diehard fans, um, we're here for you. Thanks for listening to Director's Point of View, brought to you by Ballet Met. Like what you heard? Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player and give us a rating and a comment. We love the feedback. And don't forget to tell your friends about the podcast by sharing it on social media. Of course, the best way to say you like the podcast is to attend an upcoming performance of Ballet Met. For more information about upcoming performances and how to buy tickets, check out the podcast show notes. Circle270media.com